can probably just listen. Yeah. How do I integrate 2x to the fifth power? Same way we always know. Same way we always know. Very good. So 2x to the sixth divided by 6. For 4x cubed, we would do 4x to the fourth divided by 4 plus 2x2 divided by 2. You with me? Plus C. Clean it up. We'd end up with 1 third x to the sixth power plus those 4s cancel out, leaves you with x to the fourth. These 2s cancel out, leaves you with x squared. Now, I hope you will agree with me that this was kind of a pain in the butt doing all this math. Let's say you're in an attest, and I asked you to do this, and you forget how to do this chain rule thing that I'm going to show you here in a minute. Can you do this? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yes, you can. But there will be times when it's not going to be something like x squared plus 1 to the second power. It'll be x squared plus 1 to the fifth power, or to the seventh power, and then good luck, okay? Um, in fact, if you make me have to grade x squared plus 1 to the seventh power, I will be very angry with you. <laughs> I actually did have a student um, that avoided the chain rule on a test and had to put something to the sixth, like a quantity to the sixth power, and I was not very happy. Okay, so this is what we, this is what we end up with in the end. So when I show you this other method using the chain rule today, this is what we should end up with. Now the problem is, is the way that we are going to have our answer written, it's probably not going to look like this. But if we distributed, <coughs> if we foiled out our answer, if we multiplied it all through, this is what we would come up with. Okay? We probably aren't going to do that though because then that's going to be a bunch of extra work too. We're going to put you through all of that. All right, so what I would like to do is go back to this problem. Now you can start writing. We're going to go back to this problem, and I'm going to show you guys the method using the chain rule. All right, so we are going to integrate x squared plus 1 to the power of 2, 2x dx. All right. Anybody want to take a guess right now? What am I going to do? Chain rule. We're going to use the chain rule, yeah. But what am I, remember the first thing we did when we used the chain rule? We went over here to the side, and we called something u. So what is going to be u? X squared plus, X squared plus one. This thing, because that squared, that quantity squared is what's screwing us up. So I'm going to call u x squared plus one. And it just so happens that this method using the chain rule forces us to use the derivative process again. So when I take the derivative, remember how we used to do this? We used to say u prime. du means the exact same, it means the exact same thing. So du equals, what is the derivative of x squared? 2x. 2x. So it's 2x. Now, we don't normally do this, or we didn't normally do this, when we found the derivative, of x squared plus 1, we would just say it was 2x. We never tacked this on to the end. But technically, there's a dx there. In other words, that dx just means that you found the derivative, dx. Found the derivative with x's in it. So I want you guys to notice that this 2x dx looks very, very familiar. You see it right there? So I am going to do a rewrite here as this is the integral of x squared plus 1 squared. Well, what is x squared plus 1? U. It is u. So we really have u squared. But then this stuff right here is also known as du. So now find the derivative of this the way you've always found the derivative of this. How do you, not the derivative, sorry, the integral. Find the integral of this the same way that you always find the integral. What is the integral of u squared? <coughs> no, not derivative, one, the integral. One third, one Add a power, 
add a power and divide by. So this is the same thing as u cubed divided by 3. You with me? Plus c. Because I don't give you a top and a bottom. All right, so this then is the same thing as u to the power of 3 divided by 3. What is u? x squared plus 1. What power do I put it to? Third. Third. So the third power divided by 3. Plus c. Plus c. <coughs> is it horrible? No. Mm -hmm. Um, you, yeah, this is your answer. This is the integral, this is the integral of x squared plus 1 squared to x dx. Um, you could also write it like this. You could also write it as 1 third x squared plus 1 to the power of 3 plus c, but either one of these is acceptable. What happened to the yeah, when you, whenever oh, you, yeah, 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 okay. Mm -hmm. So, hi, Mr. Morrow. Can I interrupt you for a little bit? You already did. For a little bit longer? That's not cool. I got a lot of students in here for you. I guess for seniors. Do you mind if I just present some more? That's fine. Like, you were just saying, no, I'm recording right now. Yes. All right. In case you do not get all the information I provide you right now, please look on Miss Corrigan's recording device wherever she puts that. YouTube, Twitter. Where do you where do you put this at? YouTube. YouTube. Yes. Check it out. It's gonna be solid. I have a, I have a great presentation for you. Some of you might have had Miss Co uh, Corrigan. Sorry, Miss uh, Coza in Miss Hardy's class. Anybody see Miss uh, Coza already? All right, if you did, then uh, this is less for you than it is for everyone else. Everyone else, these are your senior audit sheets. So what these are gives you two, uh, two different columns. Column one is going to be any classes you need to make up in credit recovery. If you have those, they're listed on the left-hand side. Please make sure you get down to the counseling office and fill out a credit recovery sheet if you have not already. Um, for 9th through 11th graders, they're only allowed to do English uh, in zero hour and Social studies in seventh hour, but for seniors, it is open for all of you. You can do whatever you want, chemistry, math. We just want you to get your credit and get ready to graduate. Any questions on credit recovery? Second column are all the classes that you need to pass currently. So if you have five classes in the right-hand column, that means those are the five classes you need to continue to pass in order to graduate as well. Once you have both columns satisfied, then you are ready to graduate, all right? Anybody that did not get a PE credit, you'll have a little uh, sentence at the bottom just asking you to turn in your PE waiver by May 2nd. Two ways that you can go about doing that are getting a PE waiver in the counseling office and going either to Mr. Anderson to, uh, if you did two years of band, or go down to the athletic office with uh, Ms. Wirt, Mr. Uh, Foster for your two seasons of a sport. If you did not play a sport, you did not march in band, get to see us so we can figure out how to get you your PE credit. Otherwise, you get to go to graduation, only you'll, have, you'll be in the audience waving at all your friends that are graduating. So, if you don't want to be that person, then let's find out how to get your PE credit. Are there any questions on these letters? No. All right, one is being sent home to your parents. I'm not sure if I said that. When I call your name, if you would please come and grab this, I would appreciate it. Taylor. There she is. Zuela. If you did, then uh, disregard that note. It just hasn't been put into uh, power school yet. Correct. I want to give you more than that. Um, Paige. Paige is an online kid, so she's. Okay. She 
Yeah. You have to do just a test for credit yeah. and get in the credit recovery and take a test or come see me if you're already in credit recovery. Tell me to get a test ready, take the test, pass it, and get credit. Uh, your long nurse so Koza has your she's A through M. I am N, N and I. So you did not receive this means that Koza has not got it. Yeah, no, if you didn't get a letter, it just basically means that you're not graduating. So, all right. I stopped hiding every third hour. I'm trying to find after this. All right. Thank you for letting me introduce you. You want to hear yourself speaking later? Just go to my YouTube channel. <laughs> no, I can't send my voice uh, regular basis. I don't want to hear it recorded. All right, let's do a let's do a rewrite of this. First of all, um, this square root that square root really means x cubed. What did you say? Plus one to the one half power. I just need to do a rewrite here. And then we'll stop. X to the third power plus one. And I did a rewrite, put it to the half power. Um, <coughs> isn't that weird to think that we all have first names? <laughs> all right, what's you? What are we going to call you? Me. X cubed plus one. All right, so I go over here to the side. I say that u is x cubed plus one. Find the derivative of u, so we're just gonna write du instead of u prime means exactly the same thing. Du is equal to three x squared dx. And these are all, switch it up nicely too, we have a three x squared dx. Here's a 3x squared. Here's your dx. So I can take these two and replace them with a du. A du. So this is actually, what is x cubed plus 1? U. u. It is u, but it's being put to the mm -hmm. 1 half power. And then those two together give you du. du. Now integrate it. Square out on this <laughs> um, this right here, x cubed plus 1, is what we named u. We named u x cubed plus 1. So what I'm going to do is just rename this x cubed plus 1. I'm going to rename it u, but it's being put to the 1 half power. But we have this other stuff going on around it. We have a 3x squared and a dx. Well, over here, we just named 3x squared dx. We named it du. So I'm just renaming it du. Now we need to integrate this. How do we integrate? Add 1. Add 1 to the power. So we have u to the power of what? 3 over 2. 3 over 2. Divided by 3 over 2. Divided by 3 over 2. Plus which is really the same thing as, yes, that really is a 3 over 2 on the bottom here. 2 thirds u to the power of 3 over 2 plus c, plus c. Yep. but now we just need to replace the u with what we called u. So this is 2 thirds x cubed plus 1 to the power of 3 over 2 plus c. <laughs> oh, instead of doing two divided by three and putting the three on the bottom? So I mean, like, you have to put the six. Hey guys, quiet down, please. I, I'm sorry, I'm writing her. Do you have to distribute the two in or no? Thank you for saying that. Hey guys, I actually I have a little note in my notes saying to remind you about this. So thank you for bringing this up. Cindy just asked, can you leave it like this? Or do you have to take this two thirds out front? and distribute it in. 
So what is the answer to the question? No. You could. You can't actually do that. Why can you not distribute? Because the power has a power. Okay? So, no, don't do that. Leave it like this, okay? If there is a power here, you cannot just distribute in. If there, was, if there was not a power, then you could. Okay? Well, remember, I'm going to go back to the first page. When we were talking about, we were just reminding ourselves, this is what the problem looks like. This just tells us to find the integral. When you find the integral, your integral is going to have an x in it. Okay? So when I do this, that du just tells me when you take the integral of this, you are going to have a u in your answer. And then I went back and substituted everything okay. with x. Okay? Yes? We can move by ourselves now. Um, I have a whole bunch for you to do. I have one more that I have to show you how to do because you will, it's, it's been a while since we've done one like this, so, yes? Um, are there any cases where the DU doesn't match the DU? That is an excellent question. Today, no. Okay, so we will get there. Tomorrow. Yes. Not tomorrow either. No, we're not. All right, let's, uh, let's try. One more example, five, the cosine, five x, d x. Now, I want to just, I want, I'm gonna, actually I'm going to flip screens here for a minute just so I can talk to you about this on a separate, separate clean piece of paper. What if I asked you to integrate five cosine of x? Could you do that? What is the integral of cosine? Sine. It would just well, it would be sine. The, the derivative of sine is cosine, so the integral of cosine is sine. So could you find the integral of 5 cosine of x? Yes. yes. So, so it would be 5 sine of x. Are you with me? Okay. So now I'm going to go back to this problem. What is screwing us up here? The 5x. The 5x. That is the problem. So that is what we need to call a u. And that was confusing to a lot of people when we were doing the chain rule before. The issue is that is not that we have to, to take the integral of cosine. It's that we have to take the integral of the cosine of 5x. So I'm going to call u 5x, which means du is what? 5dx. Alright, so now let's do a rewrite. This means, alright, we have a 5 and we have a dx. What is 5dx? It's du. So we have the cosine of 5x. What is 5x? U. 5x is u. So we have the cosine of u du. Now do the now do the integral. What is the integral of cosine of u? Sine. Sine of u. So this is equal to the sine of u. Plus e. That should just should just ask that question. I went back to Taylor to just ask that. We went back to the front page and said x squared dx. Remember that just meant that your function was going to have an x in it. Okay. So the the integral of the cosine of u is the sine of u du. So we have to do a rewrite now as this is the sine of the sine of u. What is u is what I meant to say. Sine of 5x. That is integral. Okay. Sine of this always makes sense because the 5 is still there. So how would you get rid of the 5 from the Because that, that's the only problem, right? You can't do the 5x. So why would you have the 5x in the integral? Don't you just have left the 5x in there? 